So we're standing here today in a beautiful hemlock stand. Some of these trees are probably up to 250 years old. Um, so this ravine is uh, a great place to walk for many people, but it's also necessary for a lot of wildlife that live here. Um, so these eastern hemlocks are very important to this landscape. However, they are now under threat of a newly introduced invasive pest known as the hemlock woolly adelgid. So this pest feeds on hemlock trees and it feeds on their nutrients, uh, leading these trees to die and eventually whole stands um, to die. So in this short documentary, we aim to cover uh, the importance of eastern hemlock in this habitat, as well as uh, this newly introduced pest, the hemlock woolly adelgid. And finally, what you can do to help either prevent or slow down the spread of this pest throughout Nova Scotia. Eastern hemlock is known as a foundational species, meaning that it has a disproportionate effect on the habitat surrounding it. So one of the really fascinating things about hemlock is that it's one of the shade tolerant species, which means that young trees can survive in the shade. Um, now, what they do, these young trees, is they basically just wait for an opening for a, a big tall tree around here to, to blow over or die. So a tree like this here, that size, it looks like it's young, but it, this could be 50 years old in fact. So here we have a slab of a hemlock that illustrates how old hemlock can get and also their growth patterns. So this hemlock started growing in 1667 and for 49 years it hardly grew at all and it was probably shaded out by big trees around it. One of these trees probably died and then light penetrated the forest and the hemlock could grow to 1992 when it was cut down. So hemlock stands are regenerated through what's called gap dynamics. That means that one or two trees may die, letting light down to the forest floor, and suddenly there's an explosion of, of growth of, of herbaceous vegetation and young trees taking over. And eventually one of these trees will dominate the gap and in say a hundred years or so, we won't even notice that there was all this vegetation on the floor because again the light will have been cut out. So one of the important uh, effects of having a canopy cover over, over a stream like this one is that it blocks out the sun and therefore the water stays relatively cool which is good for a, a number of uh, critters, fish and vertebrates. Not just hemlock provide that of course but, but any trees growing along the stream. Now if we look at the slopes around here, then you'll see that they're fairly steep. However, it's the roots that maintain the soil, the stability of the soil. And if the trees weren't here and it rained, a lot of the soil would run off, get washed into the creek and out, causing all kinds of problems. Hemlock stands give us a sense of, in fact, who we are, that we're these short-lived, almost insignificant species compared to the hemlock. So we, we are dwarfed in both time and size when we're in hemlock stands. And now all I can say is that they're awe-inspiring. Well, the hemlock woolly adelgid is an invasive species. It's a significant pest of hemlock trees. And what it does is it feeds on these nutrient and water storage cells at the base of the hemlock needles, causes the needles to fall off, and eventually will lead to the tree dying. So hemlock woolly adelgid, or HWA, has a complex life cycle. It has two generations per year, and the insects are all female, so they don't need to find mates in order to reproduce. It has a capacity to get into very, very high populations in a very short period of time. So the most obvious sign that your tree isn't infested with the hemlock woolly adelgid are these white woolly egg sacs that you right. see on the underside of the branch. If we were to to uh, peel back some of this uh, woolly egg sac. This is where the eggs are laid right. and the adult insect is present. Yeah. Now after the eggs hatch, um, they are in a mobile stage. It's right. called the crawler stage. And what they do is they walk out to the, the new growth, if there's new growth present on the tree. Right. And then they, if they find a good place to establish, they uh, insert their mouth, this, this straw-like thing that inserts into the twig. And that's where they stay for the rest of their life. 
But this crawler stage is, a, it, it lasts for months. And this is the stage when the insect is most mobile. Now, uh, this time of year, later, late summer, the crawlers are, are no longer uh, active. And actually, the, what they do is they go to sleep. So they're astivating. They oh, go to sleep yes, for, right, the, for right. the, the late summer. And uh -huh. they'll start again feeding in the fall, late fall. And then as they feed, they'll start producing this white woolly egg sac around them. And remember, they don't have to find a mate in order to yeah, reproduce. No, that's exactly so, so all they have to do is right. start producing these eggs yes. uh, when they're ready. And that, that will happen in, um, in the late winter. HWA is native to Asia. Uh, it was introduced into on the east coast of North America in the 1950s in the Virginia area, and it has since been spreading up the seacoast. In its native range, uh, HWA is actually not a significant pest. It's believed to be kept in control with some host resilience, but there are also a number of predators that feed on it. And in eastern North America, we just don't have those predators present. How it arrived in Nova Scotia it's not clear. However, we do know that the pest can be spread by people moving infested materials from an infested area to another. Uh, the pest will also spread naturally, and it can do this uh, through the wind, but also through um, birds and other animals that could brush up against a tree that's infested. So last July, uh, HWA was first discovered in Nova Scotia. Uh, we followed up with significant amount of survey work and determined that the pest had established itself in five counties in Nova Scotia. So it's present in Digby, in, in Annapolis, in Queens, in Yarmouth, and in Shelburne counties. These five counties are now currently regulated for the HWA. So we're concerned about people moving things like firewood or hemlock material that could be infested from an area where the population is to, a, to another area of the province or another part of Canada. In the United States, HWA has been present since the 1950s, and they've been managing HWA through three main methods. They've been using uh, the introduction of biocontrols, they've been using uh, applications of pesticides, and they've also been using some silviculture and management strategies in order to uh, minimize the impacts of the pest. These methods need to be assessed to see how feasible they are in the Canadian context and see how feasible they would be with respect to our Nova Scotia population. So what can you do when it comes to the hemlock woolly adelgid? Well, I think its presence here means that it's going to continue to be here. Eradicating it across a whole region like Nova Scotia is going to be impossible. But what we humans can do is slow down the spread. And we can slow down the spread by ensuring that if you are in a hemlock stand that is infected, then make sure that you don't transport what are called the crawlers from one stand to another one. Uh, firewood is a, is a pathway f for spread for many invasive species and it's always a good practice to purchase your firewood uh, where you burn it and not move firewood long distances to prevent the spread of a number of different invasive species. Additionally, an important aspect is to monitor the hemlock woolly adelgid. Uh, so if you have a, a stand where there is a trail that you, you frequent, then keep an eye out for presence of the hemlock woolly adelgid. And if you see that, then report that to the CFIA. So the, the, the aim is to slow down the spread of the hemlock woolly adelgid because the slower it spreads, the more time there is to investigate means of potentially eradicating the hemlock woolly adelgid. HWA has the potential to uh, seriously uh, impact uh, hemlock forests in uh, eastern Canada. Hemlock is an important species uh, for the environment. It's a, it, it acts as a foundation species in many forests, and there are many other uh, organisms, many other animals and plants and uh, fish that depend on an environment that has hemlock. So this loss of hemlock uh, because of the HWA has the potential to cause a significant amount of damage to the environment.